buddy Sean Morris, Truth Lies and Political Bullshit. Hey, Sean, how you doing today? We're back, the Fifth Ward. <laughs> it's okay. good to see you. Yeah, thank you. I guess you had a good time up in Maine for a bit? Yeah, I got away for a little bit. It was a nice time. Uh, get the hell away from Cahos and get some fresh air, and uh, I'm recharged, and I'm ready to roll. So, uh, yeah, hey, let's get started right into a lot of things started. going on. Yeah, it sure is. Hey, let me first uh, start by saying, um, you know, my good friend and your friend as well, and a friend of everybody in this city, um, Shelly Wojcik, um, yep. she has a, uh, a beauty salon and there was a fire above her beauty salon. And uh, I know she had, uh, a ton of water damage and my prayers go out to everybody in that building, but Shelly's uh, special to me and I'm sure she's special to so many other people. We've been friends our whole lives. So, uh, you know, Shelly, if you're listening, I send you my love and prayers. And if there's anything that we can do here with our podcast or, help you raise money or whatever you need. I don't want to just uh, assume you uh, want anybody to do anything because you are the most humble of people mm -hmm. I have ever yeah. met. Uh, always giving and giving and giving and never want anything in return. But uh, I send my love and prayers. I know Timmy does the same and everybody watching the show. And, and uh, again, just reach out if you need us and we're here. There's a lot of uh, empty storefronts on Remsen. Maybe uh, she could find another place to go. Um, because I don't see that that building being uh, repaired anytime soon. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I too and everybody else that wishes her the very best. Anything we could do to help, just reach out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so, uh, Shelly, God bless, and we're thinking about you. Now, uh, hey, on another note, uh, and this is a, a good note, uh, Zach Remillard hit his first home run in the major leagues, and mm -hmm. uh, he continues to uh, – shine every chance he gets in the game. So congratulations, Zach Remillard, on his first home run. Uh, it was really special. I was able to watch it. I'm sure you watched it on ESPN, mm -hmm. and I watched it three or four times, and, uh, you know, the smile on the kid's face made, uh, yep. made my day. So congratulations, Zach, and his family, and everybody who's uh, rooting you on. You're doing great, and, uh, you know, keep uh, working hard. You, you, you got uh, – some great talent and, and, and God knows where you'll end up because I can see you playing for a long time. So, yeah, uh, it's good to see a local kid doing well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Hey, kudos to him and his family for sticking with it. Okay. A lot of, a lot of people drop out after seven years in the minors, they give up hope, but Zach didn't. Yeah. Well, he's he, a great example of everybody who's willing to give up, uh, when you think it's, uh, yeah. You know, whenever, when it's not going your way and you want to quit and give up, just look at Zach Remillard. He never yeah. quit nine. Was it nine years, seven years? In the, seven in the, years. Yeah. Seven years in the minor leagues, 29 years old. At that point, you start to think, geez, am I, you know, am I too old? Can I still yeah. do this? Can I still contribute? Can I ever make it to the major leagues? Not only has he made it there, he's shining and he's shining bright. So, you know, yeah. never give up. Zach Remillard, you're more than just a baseball player. You're an inspiration to a lot yeah. of people. So God bless you and thank you for doing what you do. And, yep, he and paid his dues up. and the mine is great for him. Very proud of him. Yeah, absolutely. Remember having him as a 10-year-old and yeah. the kid was a little fighter even when he was 10. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just a great story. So, uh, you know, congratulations uh, to Zach and his family. So, Timmy, I want to go to something else that we've been talking about, and it's interesting because um, uh, we talked about it, and now we're having it on the podcast. We had a quick uh, conversation, and that was about the new uh, Columbia Street. Uh, yeah. And and we, we both said it, and it was funny because, you know, a lot of times we don't agree. Uh, people may think we agree on everything, but we don't. And uh, But we both agreed, hey, it was a beautiful um uh, layout and and it was going to be a an exciting new uh, part of our gateway and uh, you know new sidewalks and everything that's good about rebuilding a community and then all of a sudden we started noticing some stuff right we started noticing these big square boxes coming out from you know the sidewalk that looked like it was going to eat up one of the uh, lanes coming up the hill and then lo and behold, we've seen these beautiful new markers that mark the street. And we both, uh, you know, without even talking to each other prior, had concerns that the new layout would be somewhat dangerous for a people that don't live in the city that never uh, drove down Columbia Street. And those uh, during the times when uh, you can't see all of the markers in the road and it's just, you know, a white road. Um, because we predicted there'd be accidents. And, um, and lo and behold. Yeah, lo and behold. Now, I wasn't here, and I don't know the facts about it, but I was told that somebody in uh, one of the lanes, I don't know if they were coming up or going down. but They're they going up. Going up Columbia Street. Why don't you yeah. tell me a little bit about it, because I, I wasn't here. 
Well, uh, from the reports that I've uh, been seeing is they were coming up uh, Columbia Street, which would be heading west. Okay. And then you see how that little cutout comes in. What happens is they ended up going right in uh, over that curb and got their car stuck and had to get it towed out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, it, listen, it's easy to do. If you drove this yeah. street a lot of times, you know, you're used to coming up and then breaking in the two lanes, right? Yeah, and see, the way that nudges in, it's as if you can go around the car that might be slow or stop or whatever, but they had to go pull into the right or too far to the right when they were coming up, and next thing you know, boom. If you weren't ready for it, they ended up into those <laughs> ditches. And I guess yeah. those things are to contain water, almost like a bucket brigade, in order to slow water down. Yeah, when but, I asked the guy, because it it just didn't make sense to me. And it yeah, still, it still doesn't make sense. It's a, lot a of maintenance sense. hazard anyway. Yeah, what they said was that as the water comes down the hill, it will fill up into those things and overflow to the next one, overflow. And it will slow down the the amount of water going down at one time, which allows the drainage to catch up. And, and thus, you'll have uh, less water problems. But um, I don't know. I guess it remains to be seen. Now, if they're going to put flowers and trees in there i can assure you uh that if i had my last dollar i'd bet it would become a weed infested box like all of yeah. the other you know little parks that we made these little beautiful gateways if you come into cohoes there's weeds in that one and yes jan ruge i'm talking about weeds every podcast because yeah. they make me nuts and right you can't see it with this slide but right to the right of that tree there's a little you know a little bricked up uh kind of you know welcome to cohoes or welcome to the mm -hmm. park or just a beautification little um uh flower bed and it's always full of weeds so i can't see this one not being any different but so timmy you know you made up these slides and i appreciate it because you can see the arrows and that was uh all in response to us talking about knowing there would be an accident and we want to have this podcast that was actually done on friday um I, unfortunately i couldn't get it up in 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 um uh, running by by Friday before I left. So we, we end up having to redo a little bit so that it didn't have, you know, yesterday's news in it. But uh, we talked about being an accident and the next day there was an accident. So yep, sure you know, enough. I, I think, yeah, I think common sense tells you that. Let me just go to the next slide, Tim. Yeah. There's, and, there's, and, and while you're doing that, Sean, I'd like everybody to know, okay, these photos are taken by the Reconicron 5 drone that I fly around the city. Yeah, they're great photos and they're, and they're really clear. So this photo here, Timmy, take a look. This is you going down Columbia Street heading towards the city, right? Yes. So in the old days, you had the turning lane and then you had a straight lane that just went straight. And then coming up the hill, they had uh, the turning lane and the lane that just puts you straight up the hill, right? Just, mm -hmm, basic, yeah. just the basic kind of road layout. Right. Here you can see that when you're coming down the hill now, you have to take this little squiggly turn because if you don't and you keep going straight, you're going to run right into the turning lane for those coming up the hill and there's going to be an accident. And I told you, yeah. you know, right now you can see those lines. You mm -hmm. cannot see those lines in a uh, in a snow covered uh, road. You won't see those lines when they fade away. So the city's going to have to pay a lot of attention to make sure that you can see that road because people that don't live here, uh, especially when you can't see these squiggly lines, there's going to be more accidents. And it's scary because that's right in front of, uh, you know, the crossing to get up to Abraham Lansing's in the middle school. So, you know, I do have some concern. It's beautiful. It's a new gateway. It's great new sidewalks. Kudos mm -hmm. to the city. I wish the city would have done what I would have done, which would have sat down with the architects and the engineers and looked at it and made sure that it fit the needs of our city. Because I probably would have not wanted those um, water catching flower beds because this changed the whole dynamic of the street. And well, I think what you're going to see, and, and I'm going to tell you something, I come up the street now and even when when you have the arrow so you can turn up on James Street, there's no problem. But when it's green and cars are coming both ways and you're stopped there, it almost looks like somebody wasn't, you know, they're not paying attention and they're coming down the freaking road and they're going to run right into you. And then at the last minute, they turn over. So yeah. it's been uh, it's been an interesting endeavor, to say the least. But uh, I would imagine, just Sean, too, if you get snow and ice on there, if you're moving a little too fast, okay, you may not have time to navigate, to turn off, do that little squiggly turn. You could find yourself sliding right into that lane I, that wants you to turn left. 
Timmy, I see it. I wouldn't even be doing yeah. this. I mean, certainly I wouldn't be asking us to put these yeah. slides up and talk about this. Well, that's uh, why we did. That's why we took the photos. We want everybody to see, you know, what we see in this. And it's right. And pay beautiful attention. Beautiful as it looks. You know, it's it's really more about safety. Right. You just got to make sure you navigate it right. And I know you go, oh, people know how to drive. Bullshit. People are texting and they're not looking and they're just driving and you're going through the green light going down yep. the hill. You don't see the squiggly line. As I and said, then, already had an accident. Right. And here's where I think um, the accident is. Now, this slide that I have, Timmy, is is where you put the arrow into that bed, you know, that little indentation where it looks like. Yeah, it, yeah. You know, I'm not sure I understand what the whole point of that is other than you had to bump those, you know, square water beds out somehow. So now you have this, you know, this almost looks like it's a if you were down in the city, that's where you would park. Right. You'd pull in and park in mm -hmm. that little area. Yeah. I, you know, I think that area is going to be problematic, especially when a you got people coming up here to plow. If they plow, it's going to all end up on the sidewalk, cover all of the walkways. If they don't plow um well they well they have to plow so i, I guess that's they're gonna coming. they're gonna plow and they're gonna end up uh, as we said putting the snow where that crosswalk well, is for the kids yeah. coming across james street yeah the snow is going to be piled up on the sidewalk then it gets hard as a rock but more importantly i guarantee you that somebody driving the plow is going to plow into the, the curb about 50 times oh yeah, well, that, yeah. Thing, that thing will be shot by the end of next year it's not really a great design for care and maintenance and and for you know driving down that street if if you're new to the community because i know i recognize it because i live here but i uh gotta tell you i was down to smith's restaurant and i told you smith's doing a great job and i run into somebody who lives in texas and the mm, person yeah. from texas says hey i watch your show all the time because it's the closest thing i have to being back in my hometown but what the hell's going on with that whole bullshit up on columbia street because she uh, must have been yeah. driving down and realized she had to slide over and yeah. and so people can uh, understand how to drive and still make mistakes so look at pay attention to that uh, as you're driving up and down columbia street and there's another problem right you, you know my feelings you know over over here to the right you have um a little business and that business has always got shit all over its parking lot it's always a pigsty in my view and uh it's not well maintained and when you're coming down this beautiful new um you know gateway the first thing you see when you get down there is that shithole of a business yeah it looks and, like know, a you, junkyard it is a junkyard i mean the guy should take pride in his business and if he takes pride in his business he wouldn't leave that mess there but here's uh, something that really pisses me off here's the thing that bothers me now you could see that he's got his van parked right there in front of the business. Now I don't and know if you can see it. I should have blew the made a, a blow up of the sign right in front of it that says no parking. Mm -hmm. But yet every day you go down there, or every other day, or at least four or five times I've seen it. I can't say every day, but when you're parked right where he is, and the picture doesn't do justice to me because that is a one lane road now, one lane, and it's and very narrow. Uh, and I think, Sean, really, ideally, the sign that should be there is one that says no standing. That means you can't, you know, there's a difference be between parking and standing. No standing means you can't stop your vehicle there at all. Okay. Well, I, look, if there's nobody in there. That's parked because I stopped. So, and I said right. to the guy, I rolled down the window and he's a wise ass in my, my yeah. opinion. And he's, a, you know, he's Billy McCarthy's buddy. So he feels like yeah. he's invincible. Mm -hmm. And I rolled down the window. I said, man, you're not supposed to park there. He goes, oh, I didn't think I, uh, oh, yeah, 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 I didn't think yeah. I couldn't park. I even just busted my balls, right? But yeah. the reality is he's a, you know, in my view, he's a clown and he should take care of his building. It's a shithole yeah. and he should clean it up yeah. and he shouldn't park there because if he causes an accident, you know, it's going to be problematic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I say it too. Yeah. You see well, it? like I said, you know, I'd prefer to see that signing that sign saying no standing. That means I, you can't even stop to get out of your car. Yeah. And, and personally, I'm, yeah, I, I, that's I don't just know me. The, yeah. I, I don't know the difference between no stopping, no standing until you just no standing me means you can't you can't stop your vehicle there yeah. for. OK, and get out or do anything. It means yeah. it, uh, unattended vehicle and leave there. So, yeah, parking is one thing, but no standing means you just can't stop your vehicle there. How about you just realize there's kids going up and down yeah. the street. They did all of this because the kids, the grant came in because it was part of the, you know, yeah. the phase two or three. Yeah. I think it was phase two. Mm -hmm. And and it was done because kids, 
Not not for a guy to park there where he could cause an accident when kids are coming down the street. Mm -hmm. What happens if kids are walking, a big truck's coming up, you can't make it, and you're trying to uh, avoid an accident, you hit the van, it ends up on the sidewalk. It, it, you just don't put kids in that position. This guy doesn't seem to care. But, hey, right. Billy McCarthy, if you're listening, tell your buddy he shouldn't be there. And if the police are listening, maybe they should stop and give him a ticket. Right. You know, so you yeah. got to do a squiggly, a squiggly <laughs> to get to the right. And then if his van is parked there or whatever, you got to do another squiggly <laughs> yeah. to move to the left to get around him. It's so you're doing yeah. it's McCarthy's just, squiggly zone. Yeah. So Billy McCarthy, talk to your Come buddy. Come on, Billy. Just, just because he's your buddy doesn't mean he can break the uh, parking rules on your brand new right. uh, gateway. And so let's hey, get Tim, a no standing up? sign there, too. <laughs> How about Billy stand down there and tell him yeah. about the park? <laughs> That'd be better. Uh, so the other day, you know, we had a, a um, an issue that we were talking about, and it was that pot, big, huge pothole. I, it's not a pothole. That's mm -hmm. a, a sinkhole is a better term, right? Right. It was, it was a four big, feet deep. Yep. Right. A big sinkhole in the middle of a, of a alleyway. And people were, you know, according to the emails and the phone calls that I received, been complaining for months. And then we had uh, we had somebody on the podcast and and um, he talked about uh, Tony Severia. Uh, yeah, Tony. Tony. Tony came on the podcast and he talked about um, you know the pot, not the pothole, but uh, again the uh, sinkhole and how he's called and nobody's done nothing. And so we had it on the show. And we had Tony come on the show. He did a great job. He talked about all of the you know um, processes he went through to try to get him to do something, and nothing was done. Even Bill Smith did, but they would they Billy ignored Smith. him too. <laughs> they ignored everybody until it was on uh, Cahoes, the Good, Bad, and Ugly. Because here you go, there's the pothole, right? It's yep. the size of. Uh, it looks like they dropped a, a bomb in there. And then after we had it on the show, um, uh, they went up and they, at least they filled it in. Now that's still a half-assed job in my view. Um, yeah, it's about but, about four or six inches short. Yeah, but they went up and they did it. And since that national grid, I heard was able to get in the back and do the work they were supposed to do. So yeah, they did kudos to uh, whoever paid attention to uh, the good, bad and ugly and said to the city, let's go fix that because uh, you know, it needed to be fixed. So uh, I appreciate the city getting things done. I, I, I don't appreciate the fact that, you know, you have to embarrass them into it, but Hey, listen, Hey, like I said uh, before too. Okay. Instead of being um, proactive, they're reactive. Yeah. And, 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 you know, so we put it on out there, let people, uh, you know, um, you know, let it hit the right ears and maybe we get things done this way. And that's yeah. what we're doing. I'm happy. I'm happy. Yep. Can say, I, you know, you, you know what they're saying. They're cursing us out. But the bottom line is, you know, just this week alone, I got it's 30 for, emails. It's, right. It's um, for the good of the city. That's all. Yeah. I got 30 emails from people who have asked us to talk about stuff on the show. You know, they're, they're, they're letting off some steam. They're bitching about things that are bothering them. Yep. And, you know, we'll share them emails. And, and uh, you know what I was thinking about doing, Timmy? At the end of our podcast, we should post a couple of emails, take their names out, but just the body of the email uh, and say uh, this – you know, this is from a resident of Cohoes, and, 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 and then we'll try to address those issues. But, you know, um, people are some some people are just asking questions. I like to answer their questions on the air if we could. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, moving on, we had a great conversation. Um, talk about an email. Uh, you and I were, were discussing it. I had an email come in from a lady that doesn't live in this city who said she came to this city because she heard about the Cohoes Falls, how beautiful they were. And, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of rain and, and she thought, hey, this would be a great time to go see these things. They'll yeah. Be boring. And as you know, it's the second biggest falls in the uh, in the state, right? Uh, outside of Niagara Falls. And it's actually the, the second east in the Mississippi yeah, uh, River. It's longer than uh the Niagara the American Falls. the American side of Niagara yep. Falls yeah yep, yep. I'm uh, when I say United it's only States, twenty right and it's only twenty feet shorter in height yeah it's and and, and when it's roaring it's as it's, it's as impressive as any falls it rivals there. the American Falls if it, yep. if if it was natural the way yeah. naturally you can run it would yeah. rival the American Falls and Niagara Falls easily it really would it's it's something it's a sight to see when that thing's roaring yeah. over um but so this person came to Cahos and. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's a one way now, but you used to go up Front Street. and then It come is a one way. Park over by Cataract, right? Yeah. And, yeah. And I, if I remember right there. I think they, it's they, called School Street right now. Yeah, there's School, yeah. there's Cataract Front. But you used to turn in at Front right. and go all the way around. Yeah, but they reversed they, it. Right. Once they built that Outlook Park, 
Uh, I think they made it a one-way street. But yes. either way, the lady said, "We," she said, Mr. Morris, uh, we couldn't find a place to park, so we parked down, um, and it was by Arnold's, because if you come up the, you know, the hill, right. uh, if you come up the hill, there's Arnold's garage on one side, and they got that little kind of half a roundabout. Right. And, and cars park in there. I don't know if they're supposed to, but she parked in there and she walked into the front street side and she said, I was just saddened by the mess that I seen. We drove a long way to this city um, and we thought what we would see when we walked in there would be this well-maintained, gorgeous overlook park. And I was disgusted by it. And so she actually sent me some pictures and I thought, uh, how bad could it be? And then I, I see this picture and it's it's a jungle. Mm -hmm. So imagine not living in the city and you hear about the Cahos Falls. And now there's two parks, right? You got Brookfield who takes good care of their park. Yes. And then there's an argument who's supposed to take care of the uh, Overlook Park. Now, when I was in office, I took care of the Overlook Park because I didn't care who owned it. I cared about how we looked. I cared about Cahos Proud. Cahos Proud to me wasn't a slogan, right? It's how you felt when you seen your city. And when people came in and they seen signs that say Cahos Proud, you don't want them to see a sign that says it and then walk into the park and go, "This, how proud can this guy be, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so we maintained it. And even Brookfield, we had problems with them because sometimes all along the river, the trees would be so high you couldn't see the water. Mm -hmm. So I would send Brookfield a letter, and then next thing I know, I'd be sending them a second letter, and then I'd be sending them a code violation. I didn't care who they were. I'd say, hey, partake in fixing our community. Mm -hmm. uh, and they always end up doing it. They hired somebody in a boat, and they come and cut down the weeds. But they maintain their side. I maintain the other side. And it was, it was pristine, completely something you'd yep. be proud of. If you walk through this jungle, it is disgusting. It smells. I went up there. I took some pictures. It's a pigsty. And, it is. And there's no way in the world that you can have an Overlook Park, talk about come to Cahos, the beautiful city, uh, where everything is supposed to be shiny and new, and it's a shithole. But if you think this is bad, this is the entrance. Take a look at this, okay? That, my friend, is the bench. There's two benches right. in Outlook Park. There's one of them. And the other one was right next to it and looked like the same thing. Timmy, there's so many weeds coming through the back of that bench that I, the first thing I thought about is what the hell is that, tra that, that freaking plant that you sit on and it eats you? It's the you know, yeah. it's Venus flytrap. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm not going to sit down on that thing. It's probably the Venus flytrap and I'll end up in its mouth. Mm -hmm. But I was appalled myself by looking at it thinking, how the hell? Can you go around your city and not go up to that place that's supposed to be one of the most beautiful places in our community and not see the bench look like that and not make sure that it's cut down and clean and prestigious? Sean, I, what did you do for the weed control? Did you use a chemical on the bricks? No, on the we, went there, about we, we went up there and we cut the trees down. And we right. go back every week and cut them again and make but sure I'm, they didn't I'm, grow. Right. I'm talking about the weeds uh, that we would find in between, uh, you know, brick blocks and stuff. No, like, you know on what? The sidewalk. I'll tell you this. You, people thought I was crazy, but we would power wash the sidewalks and blow really? them out. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we, uh, I bought some power washers and we would, we would hook them up to the trucks uh, or the hydrant and, mm -hmm. and we Just would blast do, them out. Huh? We would go all the way up uh, New Cortland. Because if you if you get up yeah. by if you get up by the beautiful mill apartments, from one end of the mill to the other end of the mill, it's just beautiful. You don't see nothing. It is. It's clean. Seven. Right. Clean. And and in the city, um, once you get past that beautiful uh, apartment building, what you see is a shithole of sidewalks covered in weeds. Nobody Which takes is, care. Right. Nobody and takes all care. that's a city's responsibility. It's all the cities. Not, we had beautiful right. we had beautiful yeah. flags hanging off the poles. Yeah. That let that would say welcome to the historic part of Cahos, right? You'd yeah. go up, there'd be these nice flags. Every light bulb was lit. If it burnt out, we'd had it fixed the next day. And we'd power wash the sidewalks. <clears throat> there was also a gentleman, God bless him. I, I think he got hit by a car once. He was just a resident. Yeah, I think he was a vet. He would go yeah. around and, and just do weeds. it on his own. Yeah. 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 And um, and we didn't use chemicals, uh, but we would spray in places that were really hard. And yeah. we would just use Dove soap yeah. uh, and some vinegar and some salt 
Mm-hmm. That works. And, and that kills the, the weeds without using any chemicals. And, mm-hmm. and, um, and so you know, was- and, right. And, and not to get off topic, but if you look at those decorative uh, street lamps, all of the bases of them, if you just go up either side, all the paint and everything is all uh, gone and yeah. everything. And that's from the road salt in the winter. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, you know, they should be eventually get cleaned up and painted. Well, they otherwise they're going to rot. We, we we did paint them. We painted yeah, the, every one of them, and we changed all the light bulbs, and we hung. Do you remember the sign? Yeah, the, yeah. The flags. Yeah. So when you went up there, you looked and said, "Ooh, what a beautiful gateway!" Now it's yeah. just a shit side gateway. Yeah, it is. Of, but, so back to the park. But Billy Smith, let me give him. Let me let me yeah. just get. Billy Smith would call me up every week. There's a light out. There's weeds growing. There's yeah. this and that. And I say, Billy, it's on our list once a week. Boom, 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 boom. And he'd call up and say, "Hey, thank you. It looks great. The, yeah. the lights are lit." So. He was a council member that was on top of his A game, and uh, without question, um, I'm. You can't get it done now, though, because uh, you know they're doing everything they can not to help him out in that ward. Well, all you gotta do is take a look at that. Just look at School Street, right? Look at that that Overlook Park. Yeah. Okay, he can't get it done. So, so you you mentioned Overlook Park, but hang on, Timmy. Before we get to the park, let me just say to everybody, hey, thanks for watching our show. And if you take five minutes of your time while you're watching it to subscribe to our show, you know, hit the little bell, hit the subscription button, uh, help us grow the podcast. Uh, Every time you uh, uh, hit that bell, one at one time you hit that bell. Every time we have a new show, boom, it pops up, and you'll be able to see it without having to search for it. So, hey, please take a minute, subscribe to our channel. And, uh, and reach out to us too, because we we can have guests on here too. You can yeah. join our boy of our yeah. our podcast. Become we a can, member. Send us sure. a message. Talk we can about bring two, three people. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. So, Timmy, you were talking about um, uh, you know parks. the, the, the yep. beautiful parks, and and we have some beautiful parks, right? You and I have uh, talked about on this show how great it was to see Joe Loudis, John Domel have parks named after him. These mm-hmm. are prestigious parks. You know, you had uh, Greenbrier, you had um, Berkeley Park, you have Lansing's Park. But let me just say this, you know, there's some places in the city of Cahos that are historic. They are they they are part of like the, you know, the um, the culture uh, of the city and uh, well, the culture of the city, yeah. part of the Erie Canal, things that you would have our history. I, when I went to Maine, there's parts of Maine that have the historical parts, right? You'll just be driving down a road and there'll be just this one little patch of grass with this, you know, something that's historic and it's beautiful. It looks like a golf course grass. It's cut mm-hmm. so nice, there's flowers planted, there's no weeds and you just would mm-hmm. read it and say, you know, here was this or here was that, or this is part of this. Mm-hmm. We have the Erie Canal, tons of spots. And one of them is right over on Olmstead Street. And and I want to bring you to this, right? And so for those who don't know where Olmstead is, it's right is that street right across from Dollar Tree. Yeah, if you're coming off of uh, 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 Ontario Street, it's right, by the right. Dollar Tree. If you're coming up by the old community center, it's Cayuga Street. Yeah, it's the old row houses that mm-hmm. uh, I I grew up in. I, yeah, I, I was born in the projects. Sure. Lived in the projects, and then when we hit it big, I got to go to Homestead Street. <laughs> and uh, but those are the old mill apartments for the people that worked in the mills, right? Yes. These mill owners weren't stupid. You work for me for a nickel an hour, and I charge you three cents an hour to, to live in my buildings. And by the time you're done, you know you got two cents, and they're making a fortune, and you're, and you're working for them, and they're taking all your check. But that's that's who lived in those houses. Mm-hmm. But this this video, uh, I shouldn't say video. This picture is a side-to-side picture. This is the uh, Erie Canal. And mm-hmm. this was a, a spot in the Erie Canal where some of the water was controlled. And it, when I was a kid, they, you, you, you know, there was a, uh, a box in there and a little motor and stuff that, that ran some of the Erie Canal. Uh, I don't know the specific ways it ran it, but I just know that this was like, it was um, something that the city always maintained and kept beautiful. They would paint it and the grass would be beautiful. There'd be no weeds. And if you look at this picture now, what a shithole for one of the most historical spots left in our city. The, it, it's got no paint. It's chipping apart. And th- the weeds are growing up from the inside of it. They're all over in front of it. It is a mess. And just as important as that being part of a historical value to our city, people live there and kids live there and they don't deserve mm-hmm. to live like, like they have to live in, in a pig mess just because they're not living up on the hill or they're not living on Western Avenue. Right. 
just because everybody can't own their own house at this point in life, just because kids are struggling at this point and families are trying to raise their kids and times are tough, the city should take extra care because they should realize that those kids don't have a whole hell of a lot and they shouldn't have to live in front of a pigsty. But you know what? This city doesn't uh, seem to think so. Now, I'm going to give them a little credit because after we talked about it the other day, long and behold, they went up there and for the kids now, yep. now in this slide you can see they went up and cut the grass but let me just sh show you something before that this is what it looked like before we talked uh, about it on the last podcast these weeds were higher than the fence and they were there almost the whole entire uh um summer wherever right. summer a, is right right that fence and, is about three foot high right and, and and look at all of this shit all over under the slide above the slide the kids would go down the slide and you'd get hit in the face with weeds that would whack you on the slide. So now listen, you can see here where they cut the grass, but there's weeds everywhere still. Right, but no what's weed missing whacker. from that picture? You know what's missing from that picture, Tim? The mulch? The mulch. They and look at that. And before we dive right into it, the city six weeks ago targeted $32,000 for mulch. Where's the mulch? Where is the mulch? $32,000 for mulch and nothing has been mulched in that park. And again, I say it with great sadness. This is a park that has probably, and I'm not yeah. kidding. When I drive by, sometimes there's six or seven kids in that park. That's right. I drive by Lansing's park, I see two. Mm -hmm. if the, you know, now I see a little more because the pool's open. I, I drive by Greenbrier Park, I see three, two, three, four kids. There's mm -hmm. more young kids playing here at times than any other park in the city mm -hmm. and they don't yeah. put the mulch down and they have the mulch and that was one of the first parks we would mulch every year timmy because inside of ogden mills is a daycare center and there's a lot of look at and, and uh, on top of that that was the first parks on the list to be done yeah and it's still not done still not done and so although it looks like they cut all the grass and they did a decent job around there there's still weeds inside of the park park there's still weeds if you're going under the slides. All along the fence line, in and out, in and yeah. out, no mulch. Now, you talked about this, and I don't know if it's a requirement because our insurance companies would always come and inspect our parks, right? One of the first thing they would do is say, we're coming to do a park inspection because obviously kids get hurt in parks and, and they're dangerous. Kids have been killed in parks. So you want to make sure that these parks are safe, number one. And so I don't know if that fence is a requirement around the park. Uh, but you said it, and then I kind of agree. Now, because that fence is up, they can't cut down all the weeds because the weeds are growing into the fence. Yeah, it's a main. It's just another maintenance uh, um, problem to take care of. Uh, me, if it was me, I'd I'd get rid of the fence. Uh, but it might be an insurance reason. Who knows? But it's it just created another main. And look at I, I see other parks. Uh, Greenbrier is an example. It's near the road too. Yeah. There's no fence around that one. Yeah. So I, I don't know the particulars of why, but I probably would have put it. I always call them a cowboy fence. I'm not sure what the name is, mm -hmm. but you know, the wooden post fence. Yeah. Yeah. Where you can underneath it, you could push the mower and just weed whack around the post right. and they look really nice and pretty. Yeah. Those um, they're co like colonial fences. Yeah. I'm not sure what they're called. And listen, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. There's a park there. Yes. And my criticism is that don't keep building things that you can't take care of. And that's what this city is doing right now. You got those uh, square little water beds going down Columbia Street. Now you have to take care of them. I want to you point out something in this photo though, Sean, okay? Look at those large stones off to the right on the photo. Yeah. No weeds growing up around those stones, are there? Well, I I, I got to be honest, Timmy, there, there were, but they went around and weed whacked them. They weed whacked all around those stones, but they yeah. didn't bother to do the fence line. Correct. And they didn't okay. do inside, and right. they still haven't put down the mulch. Right, half-ass job. What they really need to do is they need to get like a row. What are they? Uh, a rotiller, ro roto. You know when well, you, just you, a, you know a when weed, you put in a no. A you know when way. you put in a garden, you push this thing to tiller the grass. To oh, tiller you, the, yeah, the, yeah, right, right, right. I yeah. don't know the technical name. You can tell how handy I am, but 
they need to go in there and rip it all out because there's just so many weeds coming up through the ground inside the park that you put mulch down, all you're going to have is mulch with weeds growing through it, and then you can never weed whack it. Uh, well, you, they, need, they they put fabric down uh, on top and then, then the mulch on top of Never. It. They just throw the mulch down. They just throw it right down, the weeds grow through it. Yeah. You need to and put the fabric down you, first. You need to get the weeds out of there first and then come up. First of all, anybody that owns a garden, including yeah. the, around my pool, that weed fence is, is just shit. Somebody mm -hmm. told me one time that if you use wet newspaper and you pile it up and you wet it and then you put the, put it down, then you put that, uh, you know, that uh, black uh, mulch. Weed, weed fence down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Then the yeah. weeds never go through because it's first it gets wet and then it's so dark. There's no sunlight. You can't grow without sunlight. And I tried it in one spot and I have no weeds and everywhere else I got weeds infested everywhere, including everywhere I mulched. The point, the moral of the story is take care of the freaking park. Don't let the kids who are poor have to eat the shit sandwich while everybody else has got a beautiful, pristine just park. That's all I'm saying. These kids deserve better, not uh, for any other reason than they're going to be over there and they're playing. Not everybody can get up to Lansing's Park. Not everybody can has a car. Yeah, there's cars there, but not every, sometimes there's a single mom or a single dad, or even if there's not, they have one car and they go to work. And it's a long walk to have a mom or somebody. And I wouldn't right. let my kids walk by themselves, especially, you know, all the way from Olmstead Street up the park. So that's their playground. Right. And you know what? Proud of. Right. And look, to all the kids and the families down there, okay, we have your back. And that's yeah. why we took the photos, okay, and we're putting it on out there. This is, I believe, Don Russell's ward. Well, Don, listen, we, we could we could talk about Don Russell, but it, it is Don Russell's ward, I believe. And you can't and, and you can't get anything looking good down there. I mean, I'm not perfectly sure what, what ward that is since I've been out of office and I don't know, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> There's a mayor of the city and he's in charge of the day to day operations and he should get his ass out of his office. He walks every day. I see him and I mm -hmm. said it 100 times. The guy walks looking at his feet. Lift your head up every once in a while and look around the city you're in charge of. And, and take some pride. Yeah. You'll be shocked at how little pride you've taken because this is not something to be proud of. This is something to be discouraged with. I'm discouraged. I grew up in 15 right across the street. And right. when I was a little kid, um, somebody took care of that. And we never had to uh, uh, play in a shithole like that. Well, you and know why Mayor Keeler wasn't, isn't at this park? Yeah, well, Very simple, because parks don't vote. <laughs> they don't vote. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you something, though. Parents do. Right. So you better start taking care of these parks and not for votes because it's the right thing. Right. So you mentioned Don Russell and uh, Councilman Russell's right here. And the reason that I, uh, I, I wanted to talk about him, or well, truthfully, you know, I didn't know anything about it because I was away and you, you called me and told me. But so Don Russell has a history of of building things in the city without a permit. Right. And there's a history with Keeler who just seems to turn a blind eye. He does turn a blind. That seems to. He does. Well, OK, we'll say that he does. Now, how ironic is this? I want to talk about the ironic political part first, not the fact that Don's got away with a lot of stuff that everybody else has got fined for and shut down. Mm -hmm. But when you can't promise the guy your long-term support and vote, it seems like you don't matter no more. So Russell, who decided not to run for office, no longer is the golden child that can cast a vote for the killer, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the yes council. Man. <clears throat> and so therefore, what does he do? He's building my understanding. I just seen some of it that it was going to be a deli or something, a meat deli and, and, and things like that. Pretty much is it in apartments Deitchers? in the back. Was it old Deitchers? Uh No, Miron's. Old Miron's. Okay. Yeah. So he buys up the old Miron's building. 239 Ransom Street. 239 Ransom Street. I remember when I was a kid. Right across it, from Anthony's. At right the across old. from his, his Anthony. So he's going to put a deli in there. Mm -hmm. And my understanding is just like he did at Anthony's when he got caught and, 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 and had his uh, hand slapped for going around the city and purchasing a piece of property. And again, I don't know if that's exactly insider what trading. That's what they, it was. They, that's they what the it, ethics board called it. It was insider trading according yeah. to the ethics board well, and from, he was charged. Ethics board wouldn't know ethics if it slapped him in they the face. Don't. And that's a whole nother argument. And you know yeah. that and I know that, but, yep. but the bottom line is, 
so Russell has done some stuff. He's built stairs without permits that certainly don't board concrete it. slabs with, without certainly permits stuff that, that doesn't meet the so-called uh, and he historic. gets away with it every time. Right, he let it. He got away with it with with his uh, restaurant, Anthony's. You know, you're only supposed to build a six foot fence. He called it some eight decorative foot. Thing, eight foot. Added whatever. two feet to make it decorative. Put a gazebo <laughs> up. Okay. The bottom line here's what he does. He basically does what he wants, and then uh, couldn't do it or whatever. And then he applies for the permit or the variance. Okay, after the fact, and he gets to keep the illegal builds that he does. Yeah, that's interesting. This, now, now I know you see me doing this, right? And, mm -hmm. and and I would tell you there was a fly buzzing around my face, but it wasn't a fly. It's my beautiful granddaughter who always wants to come up and be on my podcast. And she snuck up the stairs <laughs> and I was saying, go downstairs. But uh, Amila yeah. Papa loves you and I'll see you as soon as the show is over. But back to Russell, right? Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Teddy. <laughs> it's okay. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just love her to death. She's my whole life, and and she wants me to take her into the swimming pool. Um, so Russell is now engaged in this whole um, redoing over the the Merons, and I'm I'm not going to get a permit, and I'm going to do some stuff and just do it because I'm Don Russell. So I was shocked when I seen this. Timmy, this is the yep. two signs that are in that window <laughs> right? that now say you can't work, stop work, no more working in that place. It's dangerous. And there's the sign, code enforcement, legal notice, stop work. Now, I was shocked that they uh, went and did a stop work for Don Russell because before he did anything he wanted to, right? Right. But now that he can't cast the vote, Tim, uh, mm -hmm. Don Russell um, is no longer the golden child and they stopped work on one of his properties. Now, my understanding is that he, he was building, he was a <laughs> I just, deck. I just got to <laughs> shake my head. He, this, these are old decrepit buildings as they are. And he's building a deck on the roof. <laughs> like he's he, building a rooftop, like restaurant or something. Well, it's a penthouse. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it's an it, open deck penthouse. So I, I know that you flew your drone out, and, and here sure it is. Sure did. So now there is the roof of a building that has now, you know, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of pounds of a new deck on top of it. Right. I'm just sure sitting did, on the roof. Just sitting on the roof. I'm, I'm, I'm positive he probably did uh, no engineering study, no architectural study, no weight-bearing study. You have no idea. I could see it now. 20 people on the roof end up on the first floor because, because you have to get permits. You have to have engineering reports. You can't just build a deck on top mm -hmm. of an old decrepit building that's falling apart as it is and think you could sit 30 people up on top of it. I mean, right. what's going on with this guy's mind? Yeah, and and that that little um, – what that deck is on is on, uh, on two little stories – of a building. So imagine the snow and ice load on that deck in a winter. Okay. The, yeah. What it's going to do to that roof. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be living in the apartment below. Well, it, it, I, I certainly look at, we have seen in, in our lifetime where things weren't done correctly and buildings have collapsed and oh, yeah. decks have collapsed. Now I'm trying to remember when I was a fireman where we were, when a porch collapsed, and like 12 people that were on the porch, you know, they went down two stories and they all got hurt. Mm -hmm. um, that is a, exactly what this is, a disaster yeah. waiting to happen. So I am happy that Code stopped this project mm -hmm. because I think Donnie um, did not think this out and put people in danger. And if he was still the golden child, that would be up there. Somebody would get hurt. That would collapse. Um, lucky enough that... Um, code stopped it but that's what's going on man you just is he going to be allowed to keep it that's the whole thing he's gotten well, away with everything so far will he be allowed to keep it i'm told the people have until you know they had 48 hours or something to move out of the apartment i heard they stopped it and told made everybody get out and said it's dangerous and i agree yeah, I, I agree. agree listen when it snows out i bought a snow rake just like everybody else yeah. does right and you and you rake the snow off the top of your roof because you don't want 12 inches of snow on your roof because the roof ain't built for that much, right? 
Who's mm-hmm. here? Uh, maybe code enforcement's there. Not, I was just looking to see if it was Russell breaking in to kick my ass. Because, <laughs> but no, it was Amila once again. <laughs> yeah. well, she's She is uh, hell-bent on getting up here with Papa to get into the swimming pool. But So Donnie Russell, um, you know, think it through, Donnie. Nobody's saying that they don't want to see a nice rooftop uh, establishment. Nobody's saying that at all. Nobody's picking on you. Nobody's saying you make yourself a target by doing things without doing them the right way. You get a permit. I'm almost positive, and I'll stand corrected, and if anybody knows, you could put a little message up at the end of the podcast, but I think you have to have a architect or an engineer report when you put up a deck in your yard. Well, There's got to be some uh, kind of plans that you're supposed to submit, right? Well, normally, even if you put it on, on the outside... Uh, you've got to have um, concrete. Um, but there's uh, plans because I, I, right. I think I was going to put a deck an addition on my deck and they said you got to get the plans and they look at the footings and how much weight yeah. it holds and the wood yeah, and everything all else. of that stuff. Yeah, that's just a little deck, a four by four deck uh, on the side of your house to set a hot right. tub on it or something. Right. Here yeah. is a uh, commercial space for 30 people on top of a deck, you know, with patio furniture, I'm sure, and everything else that goes along with having that little uh um, you know, rooftop overlook. So, well, what um, you're gonna, yeah, like you're gonna see that thing cave in. Well, you're not now. Once it gets snow and ice, <laughs> snow e- even without, even without people on it. But you know that that's just a catch basin for more snow and uh, ice and and I, I don't see how that roof is gonna support this. Deck. I don't either, and I think that they're probably gonna make them uh, take, take it, it down. Out. So that's uh, that's what's going on in the downtown and. Uh, you know, that's what we had to uh, share with you guys today. So uh, you had uh, um, some information about being careful driving down Columbia Street because we've already had an accident. And if you're not from here, it is kind of a, a different approach. Yep. Uh, you got Donnie, uh, the builder up there <laughs> building his his deck without any permits. This old uh, house. Yep. Th- this old <laughs> house. And then you got the hey. Uh, Mr. Uh, Keeler, would you please get over to the parks that the uh, people that don't have as many uh, dollars in their pocket and are struggling, and that's where I was born and raised, so I know what those families uh, are going through. They're just trying to live a a normal, everyday life, and when the only park you have is uh, infested with weeds and ticks and no mulch and every other thing that uh, should be in there that's not, um, you should take care of that with pride. Go over to that beautiful, um, uh, historic, you know, Erie Canal uh, uh, stone wall and fix it and paint it and get the garbage off it. Clean it up, man. Clean. You know, I'm not saying this in any way. People could take it for what it's worth because, you know, I don't really care. But if I was to go down and find a homeless man, first of all, I, I would hope that I couldn't because... I want everybody to live a good life, right? But let's just say I found a homeless man and I took a picture of him. And then I took him to a, a, a shower and a shave and I put a new four or $500 suit on him with new shoes and, and a new haircut. And I put the two together. You'd say, holy God, I want to be next to the guy with the suit on, not next to the guy that's, that's the homeless guy, right? Well, that's the same thing when people drive through your community. If your community looks like shit, it looks like shit. But if you put a new fresh coat of paint and if you make it look something where you Take can some be pride proud of, in it, when people drive through it, they feel the pride. They feel Cahoe's proud. Well, the pride has to start with the city administration. Well, it does. It has okay. to start with somebody who cares. And if you don't care, it's never going to start. But my God, uh, there are so many things that could be better with just a little TLC. That's all it needs. Yep. But instead, they want to spend a boatload of money on stupid shit. Now, Timmy, next week we'll talk about it, but I, I'll just bring it up. I heard that uh, right across the street from Canal Square Park is the old bank. Right. I'm being told that the city's going to turn that into the city library. Commercial property. So they're going to take a commercial property in the middle of a downtown and turn it into a, a city-owned building that doesn't pay taxes, that doesn't have any uh, value to the downtown. I am not a huge fan of libraries. I think they're yesterday, right? And then I, I think, it, you know, you can get all the books you want. You can have uh, everything online. Uh, but I am a big fan of meeting spaces. So if the meeting space is still a library where people can go, kids can gather, I'm okay with it. 
it's probably got to change a little. I think mm -hmm. library books is, is, is yesterday. I think we've done some, we got computers in there and there's, you know, there's classes and stuff. So there's a value to it, but I like the spot where it is because it's right close to the downtown, but it's off the beaten path. But to take a commercial property off the tax rolls, right in the heart of your downtown that you're trying to revitalize with your mm -hmm. $10 million is stupid at its highest level. Mm -hmm. And it's going to cost them what they got to pay. It's got to be at least a million, million and a half dollars if you buy the building. The building was 400000 when I was the mayor. So I don't know what they want for it now. But if the building's 400000 then it's going to take you how much to renovate it and get it up to code and everything else to become a public space. It's got to be a million and a half dollars. So more money the city's going to spend. But taking it off the tax rolls in the middle of your business district when it could be turned into a business is foolish at every level. But then again, welcome to the city of fools mm -hmm. because that's what we have. Um, I don't know, Timmy. That's all I got for today. And uh, I appreciate meeting up with you and talking about some of the things we got in Cohoes. Um, anything you want to discuss? Well, to all our uh, readers and uh, and our viewers here, okay, um, look at that. Uh, uh, we're always looking for stories to put on out, okay, whether it be good, bad, ugly, whatever it is. Uh, shoot us a, um, a message on Facebook. We're on Facebook. The Reconocron 5 drone is uh, out and about around the city here and there. If you, uh, if you uh, want to see an overflight, just give me, a, give me a call, send a message. We can send a drone on out. Uh, whatever is interesting, uh, we'd like to be able to do it on a podcast. And with that, Sean, I'd like to say uh, thanks for another podcast number 21. 20. 20. 20. We did 20. this one the other day, but we had to redo it because yeah, we, you're we right. didn't get it up. Yeah, we yeah. couldn't get uh, 21 on up or 20 up, so yeah, yeah. it's a rehash of number 20. This is a rehash. So, hey, everybody, uh, this is Take Sean care. Truth, Lies, and Political Bullshit, my good friend Timmy with the Fifth Ward, and you're uh, visiting us here on Cohoes, Good, Bad, and Ugly. Be safe. Take care. Keep enjoying your summer. Keep visiting the downtown. Spend some money. Help our businesses. And uh, don't be afraid to call City Hall and ask them to clean up the city because it looks like shit. But more importantly, tell them that just because you don't have a lot of money and live in a half a million dollar house doesn't mean you shouldn't have a nice park. And people on Olmstead Street and those kids deserve nothing but the best. So okay, until next week, Timmy, I'll see you later. Take care. Thank you. Good day.